One of the best ways to make our custom car audio system sound amazing is to add a DSP to that system. A DSP or digital signal processor allows us to control time alignment, crossovers, and tune an equalizer for each speaker in order to tune our multiple speaker system to perfection. Now normally adding a DSP to the system would mean adding this piece of equipment along with your amplifiers. But Audio Control has now released their new D-6.1200 which has all the functionality of a DSP built into the amplifier. Amplifier. This is awesome because now there's less wiring needed for the system, there's less space needed for the system, and whether we are using an aftermarket radio or the factory audio system, we have a ton of functionality and flexibility to use this amplifier. Now, I will warn you guys up front, this amplifier has a ton of features, and I really want to show you guys everything in detail, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to show you everything that comes with this amp. I'm going to cover how you would install this amplifier and what connections you would make, and I'm also going to show you all of the tuning options in the software. Let's get on into it. Before we get started and I show you what to expect with the actual box opening, I want to skip ahead and explain what situations you would want to use this amplifier for. As you may have guessed, the six means that this amplifier has six channels of output. But that does not just mean that the only thing this amplifier is for is connecting six speakers. This amplifier is fully configurable, which means we can do a ton of different system designs using this amp. This is the manual for this, and they actually give us a couple of different examples. You can see in this six channel option, what they actually did, they're kind of treating it like a five channel amplifier. They have the front left and right speakers, they have the rear left and right speakers, and then there's so much power in this amplifier, you'd have no trouble running a 400 watts RMS subwoofer on that fifth and sixth channel. Another example system here is we could do an active two-way system up front. So we could do active tweeters on channels one and two, active mid-range on channels three and four, five and six would be our rear full range speakers. And then you guys will see later that we can actually control, even with the DSP, a separate amplifier if we wanted some more subwoofer power. And keep in mind, we can do this system using either an aftermarket radio or we can even use a factory radio going into the speaker level inputs. Yet another option for this amplifier that's not even in the manual, for you sound quality guys that delete the rear fill, you could do a three-way active system off this amplifier. You could do channels one and two on tweeter, three and four on mid-range, five and six on the woofers all up front, and still have that output for your separate subwoofer amplifier as well. The reason I wanted to start with that information is I think it's super important to understand that this isn't just a six channel amplifier that you're just gonna connect six coaxial speakers and call it a day. You totally could do that if you wanted to, but the point here is that there are a ton of different options here, and you guys are really gonna get a feel for that once we get more into all of the features. The D-6.1200 is a six channel amplifier that has a DSP built in. This means that we can connect this to a computer, completely tune the output, and get awesome sound quality. We can sum the channels, there's AccuBase built in, it has source clip detection, we can do high level and low level inputs, there's a built in option port for Bluetooth tuning and connection, along with OEM connection possibilities. We'll talk more about this later. As far as power goes, we have 125 watts RMS times six channels at four ohms, or 200 watts times six channels at two ohms, and we can bridge each channel pair for 400 watts bridged at four ohms. And just in case you guys are wondering, audio Control is a reputable brand. These are actual RMS ratings. The packaging has a sleeve like this that reveals this inside box, which we can open up. Inside we have our instruction manual. If you're not familiar with audio control, you should definitely take a look at their manual. They have some cool humor in here. It's really fun and actually kind of makes it interesting to actually read through. An example of this humor is even look at the package here. Beverage of choice, oh yeah. We have the amplifier itself here. We're just gonna set that aside for the time being. We also have a USB connection cable. This is so we can connect to our computer and actually tune. And then we have a small little Allen wrench. This is for taking the top plate off of the amplifier. I'll show you guys that now. We'll get this open. So here's the amplifier with the top plate connected. It's a little less than 12 inches wide, seven and three quarters inches deep, and two and an eighth inches tall. For you metric guys, that's about 30 centimeters wide, 19 and a half centimeters deep, and five and a half centimeters tall. To disconnect the top plate, there's two different Allen key screws here and here. 
With those loosened, I'll remove the top plate here. By removing that, we have access to this switch. We can also see a number of different indicator lights, and we have access to the different screws to tighten in the power connections. You'll see three 40 amp fuses here. These are zero gauge connections for power and ground. We also have the amp wire connection. We have all of our low level inputs along with a low level output, more on this later. We then have our high level or speaker level inputs here. You'll actually notice that there's eight channels of input there. We have a USB connection for tuning. We have the ACR3 level control, which is a remote base knob, or we can configure it to be a volume knob. And then we have all of our speaker outputs. Finally, there's the option port here. This is so we can connect devices like the AC-BT24. This allows for Bluetooth streaming with aptX HD technology. This is sold separately, but it's actually also a dual Bluetooth chip, which means we can stream into it and we can tune via Bluetooth as well. But this is optional, we don't need it. We can still connect to this with a computer to do all of our tuning. Finally, in the future, there'll be a similar device like this that plugs into that port and it allows for OE integration with more advanced vehicles where we want to capture the data signal. So it will actually work with a Maestro AR device if you're familiar with those. Let's get on to doing an installation. To demonstrate that, I'm going to be using the Car Audio Fabrication Integration Test Center. Now what is this? This is basically a stock radio and a stock premium amplifier pulled out of a vehicle. What's important to understand about these stock systems is a lot of times the different channels going to the speakers are bandwidth limited. Let me show you what this means by connecting to this. So this channel that I'm connected to here is actually the stock subwoofer channel. As you can see, it has only the low range frequencies. Now here's the thing about these factory systems. We wouldn't know what frequencies are actually playing on that channel without testing it. And we need to know what frequencies are playing because if we tapped into this particular signal for our front speakers, we would only have bass information. We wouldn't have any of the vocals or any of the highs. We'd actually want to use something like this channel here for the front speakers, you can see we have much more of the frequency range. And you can also see our response is all over the place. That's something we need to fix so that we have a nice flat signal to start out. And that's all things that we can fix with this amplifier. Now I know what you're thinking, how am I possibly going to know what I need to tap into for this amplifier if I don't have this very expensive RTA tool? Well that my friends, I'm going to show you guys, it's actually built in. To get started with the actual installation of the amplifier, we would of course find a nice secure mounting location where we can use the four different mounting holes to secure this amplifier into the vehicle. Next, we will attach zero gauge or four gauge wire connections for both the 12 volt source power and the ground. If you're using the RCA low level inputs, you would also want to attach the remote in from your aftermarket head unit in order to tell the amplifier to turn on. But in this case, I'm not gonna be connecting a remote in, and I'll show you why in a second. The reason we don't need to turn that on is because Audio Control has the GTO, which stands for Great Turn On Signal Sense Technology. And you can see right now I have the switch over in the left on position. What this does is it monitors the speaker level input. So when the amplifier actually detects a speaker level input, which I can simulate by connecting these two wires here, you can see that the amplifier turns on. Now the other thing that's cool is if we check the voltage across the ground and that now remote out, you can see that we have a voltage output that we could then provide to other downstream equipment. So if we wanted to turn on another amplifier or activate a relay or something of that nature, we can now do so because we have this remote output. Now remember earlier I was talking about seeing what the frequency response is on each of the different speaker channels. I wanna show you guys a cool little trick. Now I'm currently cheating and I've jumpered the remote input off of this 12 volt, you obviously wouldn't want to do that. Otherwise your amplifier would never turn off. I'm just doing it for the time being so that it doesn't turn off on me when I unplug this signal. So the cool little trick that we can do with this amplifier is I'm currently playing pink noise on the factory system. Pink noise is equal energy per octave. So as you can see on this speaker output that I'm currently connected to, we can actually see that this is the high level signal. I'm going to move these over to this speaker. Now we can see on that connection that we have more 
of a full range signal. It's missing the highs from that tweeter on that previous channel that we checked, but in this software, we can sum them together. So this software is what you will download from Audio Control. You can see that we can do all sorts of different tuning. I'm gonna show you guys more of this software in a minute here, but I just wanted to show you that useful kind of trick for determining what signal is on the different speaker output channels from the factory system. That way you guys know what you need to tap into. I've made all of my connections here. The first pair are these white wires here, which are going in to the front channels one and two. You can see that there I'm using my tweeters. Next on channels three and four are the purple wires, which are my full range with the exception of the tweeter input. And finally, the green wires down there are my channels five and six, which in this case for me is my subwoofer input. What's cool is in the software here, you can actually modify the names for each of these. So you can see that I typed in front tweet, front mid and sub just so I remember. You may remember earlier, I mentioned that there's actually eight total channels of input. So this top corner here for this connector, those are the front high inputs. What would you use those for? Those are handy because what you would actually use those for is let's say you have a chime coming in from the factory system. It's actually something that's common on a lot of GM vehicles. And when you amplify that chime, it's gonna be super loud. So you don't wanna amplify it, but you obviously wanna retain the chime. Having that signal come in separate on those channels is handy because we can control the level of it independently in the software. Now we still have a few more connections here to make. This amplifier is super versatile. There's a ton of different options for total system design. Let's say for my application, I know that I wanna do a three-way front stage setup. So in other words, tweeters on the first two channels, min range on channels three and four, and then finally a woofer output on channels five and six. But then let's say I also want to have a subwoofer on a totally separate amplifier. I can actually get the subwoofer signal out of this amplifier and I'm gonna connect these wires as well. So basically with these line outputs, I can send a low level signal to another separate amplifier. For my example system, let's say that I also wanna control the level of just that subwoofer. I can do so using this ACR3. So the ACR3 plugs in right here. And like I said, we can use it to control the subwoofer volume or I can actually control the total system volume. I'll show you guys how to set that up in software. But the other thing we can do is if we click and hold it in and then we go over, we can pick different presets. Once we've made all of our connections within the vehicle, we're going to dive into this software and completely do our tuning. Let's do that now. So here we are in the software. And one of the first things that's gonna happen when we connect is we need to punch in a pin code. Now by default, this is gonna be one, two, three, four. The idea here is so that somebody can't change your settings if you don't want them to. You can see that we're connected to a D-61200. This same software is also used by Audio Control for their other DSPs and amplifiers. Now within the software, there's three main sections. We have our input view, we have our output view, and then we also have our dashboard view. I wanna make sure that we're on memory one to get things started, so I'm gonna switch over to that. Now our input view, we're going to see that input signal like we were talking about earlier. So again, this is our tweeter channels, this is our mid-range, full-range channels, and this is our subwoofer channel. We can retitle each of these channels up here. On each of these channel pairs, we can control a number of different things. First of all, we can set our input gain just like we would with any normal amplifier, but we can do it for each pair of channels. There's a nice clip detection light here that will turn on if that input is too high. There's also a mute control. This allows us to mute that particular input if we're doing different testing when we have our actual speakers connected. Finally, we can do left channel and right channel delay for each of these channel pairs. Now down here, we have the RTA, which is displaying how much signal is occurring at each different frequency. And we can of course change the range of this particular scale. And we can also change how quickly the RTA scale will move. When we get started with the tuning process, the input view screen is really just to see what we're working with and to set up that input gain along with the delays. Odds are we're gonna spend much more time in our output view screen. I switched over to output view View, and we're currently looking at channels one and two. Now just for our sake, so we can remember, let's say that we're doing that three-way setup and we know that these front two speakers are our active tweeters. In this section here, we determine where we wanna get the signal from for those tweeters. So for output channels one and two, I wanna get that signal from input channels one and two. Again, we can mute the output and we can also control the level. Next, we can tell the amplifier if we want our ACR3, that external knob to control this particular channel, I can click this button and that way we'll actually be turning up the volume on this channel pair as well when we adjust it. But for this case, we're only gonna be doing that on our
our line output, so I'm going to leave this selection off. Finally, if I wanted to link everything for channels 3 and 4 to 1 and 2, I could do that here. Now just as an example though, let's say that instead of using channels 1 and 2 for tweeters, we're going to use them for our front speakers. In other words, let's say we were attaching some coaxial speakers that have both a woofer and tweeter built in, we need a full range signal down here. So what we can do is we can actually sum channels 1 and 2 from the input along with 3 and 4 just by clicking that button there. Now we have a complete full range signal. Now that we have this full range signal, we need to add in our own crossover. So we obviously don't want bass frequencies playing through our front, let's say they're six and a half inch speakers. So let's just set this to 80 hertz, for instance. You can see that we can also control the slope of that crossover. We can do 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave on both the high and low pass crossover. Now what really helps for getting a great sounding car audio system is having delay. You have to remember that a sound wave is actually somewhat slow. So a speaker that is a little bit further away from you will actually take longer for that sound to reach your ears than a speaker that's closer to you. Because of this, we wanna delay each of the different speakers so the sound from all of them arrives at your listening position at the exact same time. The way you set these two settings is you literally measure the distance between your listening position and that particular speaker. So let's say that this one's a little bit closer to us, so it's only 36 inches, and let's say this one's a little bit further away, 54 inches, it's just as simple as that. Now something a lot of you guys have always asked about the delay is what if you wanna set up your system so it sounds good in multiple different positions in the car? So it sounds good in the driver position and in the passenger position. What you would do is you would make yourself a different preset that you could tune to when you have other people in the car where you adjust this delay accordingly. Now to show you the next section here, AccuBase, let's switch to our line output channel. Remember that this output of channels is going to be what we're sending to a separate subwoofer amplifier. So you can see right now we have this full range signal. Let's say that we actually wanna get our subwoofer signal, which was on channels five and six. So on our crossover, we don't want a full range signal. Let's say we wanna go from something like 25 hertz all the way up to 80 hertz. What the AccuBase will do is a lot of times on a factory system when we turn up the volume here, as we turn up the volume, the system will actually roll the bass response off. They do this to protect their inexpensive stock speakers. So obviously since we're upgrading and adding a subwoofer, we wanna get rid of that functionality. So with the AccuBase, we can tell this system when we want it to turn on and activate as you can see it's active here and then we can tell it how much bass we actually want to bring back into the signal by using the level control here for this particular system it doesn't really roll off the bass, so I'm just going to bypass but there are many factory systems out there when you connect to them that it will roll off that bass response so you'll definitely want to be sure that you're aware of that Let's switch back to our front speakers here where we have this full range signal. So on the full range signal that I'm playing right now, you have to remember that I'm currently playing pink noise. What that means is we should currently have a flat line going across here with all of these blue bars, but we don't because the factory system, the manufacturer of the vehicle, they've applied their own EQ curve for what they think the speakers will sound good. To correct this, we can click this auto button to get started. We're gonna go ahead and click yes. It asks us if we wanna accept these settings. You can see it's gone through and it's already made its automatic adjustment on the EQ. Now you can see on the blue bars, we still have a little bit of a hump going on here. Let's go ahead and hit auto again. The software is designed intentionally not to make too drastic of a change at once. Here we go, now we're sitting even more nice and level. Now also notice that the software is smart enough to know that it doesn't need to play with stuff that's below or above the crossover frequency. So this functionality here is super powerful. Rather than starting with some crazy EQ curve out of the factory system and having it frankly not sound very good, we can immediately start with a result that we understand. We can start with this nice flat frequency response. So even with just doing this basic tune, it's going to sound a lot Lot better and we can improve upon this tune even further by using an acoustic microphone and actually analyzing the output of the speakers and adjusting each of these outputs as need be when it comes to doing manual adjustments I want to show you guys a few things so I did click flat and flattened everything back out you can also click this draw button that allows you to just go along and kind of draw your EQ curve the other thing that's nice is let's say we've done a bunch of EQing and we want to kind of hear a before and after difference between all of that work we've done, we can just click bypass. It will bypass our EQ curve without clearing it out. And if you were looking for a little bit more of a simple tuning experience, you can change between attend band, 
14, and 30 band equalizer. Now up until now, all of the EQ that I've applied has been for this channel pair together. It's been both speakers left and right on one and two. But if we did want to apply individual EQ, let's say that we want to turn down something here because there's a spike in the response on just the left hand speaker. And then let's say we go to channel two, you can see that we could control this side independently. And as a quick side note, if you're wondering why sometimes you see the blue bars drop off like it just did, it's because I'm playing a CD with this pink noise, I have it on a repeat track, so it's when the track is repeating itself. Finally, the other thing worth noting with the RTA is we can click one of these and then on our keyboard we can hit up and down. So instead of always having to click and drag with our mouse, this just gives us another way to kind of switch back and forth. We can actually arrow left and right to select the different frequencies and again then just go up and down. So now we can move on to our dashboard view. And dashboard view is basically a combination of the input view along with the output view and everything's a little bit smaller so it might be harder to kind of click and manipulate but the idea is that everything is here on one screen. In fact, in order to actually be able to adjust the full equalizer, we'll click it and you can see it expands this screen. So we have a much bigger view, a lot more real estate to adjust everything. One more thing I wanna do here on the output view screen, if we go to line out, I wanna activate the ACR3 remote by clicking here and off camera, I'm adjusting the knob. I'm going down right now and then I can go back up. So this is allowing me to independently control that subwoofer output volume with this knob. So we've got all of our tuning done. Now we need to save our tune. What we do is we'll click and hold on the one here since this is preset number one and we'll say yes. And it's gonna load all these settings and save them into preset one. Now I've typed in that this preset is for the driver. Let's say that we wanna make preset number two for when we have a passenger also in the vehicle. So we'll call it passenger. And I can copy everything from channel one to channel two by just simply clicking and holding with the mouse. Now we've transferred everything so one and two match. And I can also make all of my different adjustments on channel two in order to make it best for both the driver and passenger and resave this preset. And don't forget that that optional ACR3 allows us to switch between the different presets. Now a few other final side notes about this software. We have different tool options. We can reset the hardware settings, change our pin. We can change the output delay so we can do inches or centimeters or even milliseconds depending on what you want to work with. We can always update the firmware. So when Audio Control releases different firmware updates when we connect with our computer, it will actually automatically update. And we can also do this here where you can enter the ADS Maestro mode. What this particular mode allows us to do is when we connect with the ADS Maestro AR, which is the amp replacement module, along with the DM link from Audio Control, which will be coming out in the future. This allows us to have a completely flat signal in, which isn't really simulated right now because I'm not using those devices. But we'll also be able to go through and tell the amplifier what each of these different channels is, and it will actually bring in all of the different data, so the chimes and everything that automatically comes from the vehicle into the amplifier. The final thing to note here is if we go to Site File Manager, we can do save as and we can actually save all of our settings. So let's say we were doing a vehicle, let's just say for instance like an F-150 with a particular set of speakers and we had everything tuned and ready to go, we could save all of that tune. That way if we were a shop and we installed that same system into a vehicle, we could reload that exact same tune and have another great starting point without redoing all of that work. From a DIY standpoint, it's also nice to be able to save that tune just in case anything ever happens, you can reload that tune back on the device. So the tuning software on the computer, as you saw, has a ton of flexibility, but it's also very intuitive, easy to use. Once you kind of get a basic understanding of it, you can rip through initial tunes pretty quickly. And don't forget, audio control is working on the functionality so that instead of connecting a computer, we would use a mobile device and connect through the AC-BT24 to tune this amplifier on that mobile device. Bottom line, this amplifier has a ton of tuning flexibility and system design options. I've ridden the non-DSP version of this amplifier in my own personal vehicle for over six months now, and I've really been enjoying the sound quality. And so far, my testing with this amplifier has been a similar experience. If you guys wanna learn more about this amplifier, you can check out links down in the video description. I definitely encourage you to download even the software, which you can get for free, and just kind of play around and see all the different flexibility that you can control on this amp. A special thanks to Audio Control for sponsoring this video and sending over the amplifier so I could make this overview video. If you'd like to see some of my other audio control videos, you can check them out here on screen. This was quite the long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.